Oh, we're good? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Streamlabs Live, a new weekly podcast where I interview streamers and people in the streaming industry. I'm your host, Doug Vandalay, broadcasting to you live from the Streamlabs Vancouver office, located in the unceded territory of the Coastal Salish peoples of British Columbia. If you missed the show with Terry Smith last week, you can watch the VOD on YouTube in the link below, or subscribe to the audio podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and anywhere you usually find your podcasts. Before we get started today, I'd like to introduce Streamlabs Merch. Create your own online store in seconds, get paid every month, receive custom alerts with each purchase to thank your viewers. And with worldwide shipping and lightning fast delivery, it's truly magical. Create, design, and start your own custom store by visiting streamlabs.com forward slash merch now. I'd also like to give a special shout out to Curtis Carey who made the title animation and music for this podcast. You can watch his creative stream on twitch.tv forward slash no such thing as grown ups. This week we have two guests in the studio, Stacey Roy and Mike Hi. Parkinson of Media. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much for having us. Oh, thanks for coming. You have an amazing setup here. I'm so excited. I plan on just like hanging out here all day. I hope you're okay with that. Oh yeah, that's it's kind of a, an open office for streamers. Um, you can talk to uh, Ricky Tran at Ricks on our, on our Discord. Um, we have an open streaming room as well to oh, schedule. Oh, that's, that's cool. That's super cool. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Well, what you got going on here is great. So it seems like you two have been uh, having a super busy week. Um, <laughs> it's been so busy. To like, put it mildly. <laughs> Insanely busy. I think I've pulled seven all-nighters in the last like five weeks, four weeks, all-nighters. It's been a crazy, crazy busy right now, which what is good. Working? It's good to be busy, right? Yeah. Um, what are you working on? Mainly, uh, we are working on a TV show that we are filming right now, and then still trying to keep all of the streams up and running to the best of our, our capabilities. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the show at all? Yes, a little bit. Yeah, like we a can. tiny bit. And the thing is, I think in the next like week or two, I'm gonna have so much information to tell people. So guys, just like hang tight. Basically, we are doing a show that is in the vein of what we already do right now on Twitch, and it's for a new OTT network. And what else did I say? OTT oh, is over the top. Over the top. So like a Netflix or Hulu, like a subscription service network. Right. And it's brand new, and it's gonna have amazing content on it. And really excited for it. And is that all I can say? I feel like there's more I can say, but I don't, I, I don't think there actually well, there's, is. Well, there's something I found that was public. Is it stream on? No. Or is that a different thing? That is a completely different thing. That's a completely thing. different That's thing. That's a completely different thing. What's yeah. that one? Stream on was a competition I was a part of back in March, April? March? March? April? April? <laughs> all and days are the same. The all same days time. are the same. Same time last quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. It's very well. And that was actually through Twitch, and that was a game show that was happening um, for, I think it was 10 Twitch streamers? I think it was 10. 10 Twitch streamers, roughly. Uh, we had all like auditioned to be on the show, and we were all competing for $60,000 from Twitch to really get our channel out there and promote what we do, and that was a competition through Twitch. So the TV show that we're doing right now is completely separate, has nothing to do with Twitch. It's a brand new network, it's, we it's, got, we got, it's TV shows. <laughs> we, we, we found out we were gonna be a part of Stream On. It was within days we found out that we'd sold the TV show, and they had to be done at the same time. Yes. So was there, was there any conflict with that? Uh, as far as like sleeping, yes. As <laughs> yes. far as like professionally, no. Right. No. I understand you uh, the only Canadian contestants on. We that were show. the only Canadian contestants, <laughs> and then there was also Glan FM, who was from the UK, who has become one of our good friends now, and that was it. And the rest were American contestants. So we were representing Canada, and Glan FM was representing everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> the UK. The entire UK. So I feel like your channel is structured more like a traditional TV network than a typical game streaming channel. Yes. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about your different shows? Yeah, absolutely. Well, when we started streaming, I started off with doing gaming, and that's kind of how I like broke into Twitch a little bit, was doing my gaming. And my true passion has always been my shows, and I used to have a show called The Nerdy Bartender on YouTube, and we transitioned that onto Twitch. So Nerdy Bartender is a talk show where I have guests on, I interview them, we hang out, we play games, and we make pop culture themed drinks. And I also have a cooking show called Cooking with Stacy. and one of them is on Sundays where we make up different dishes and we have a theme or theme ingredients, and people from all over the world make a dish, they take a photo of it, they submit it in for a competition. So we do kind of like an Iron Chef-esque 
competition on Sundays and then Monday Midnight Munchies where I just make delicious. Whatever you're craving. Whatever, whatever I'm craving late at night, that is what I make on Mondays and then I have a hangout stream during the week. So those are those are the different shows I do right now. I've had many other shows too though on Twitch though. I used to have a Dungeons and Dragons show, I used to have a virtual reality show. So it's constantly the virtual reality show. Pardon? What was the virtual reality show? Yeah, like the so viewers had VR headsets, so Oh no, we did. So we would try out different virtual reality games and we would bring on different guests and we would talk about the future of VR. Right. So just getting different perspectives from Yeah, is that, is that an old studio which has uh, since been closed down called the uh, Roadhouse. Roadhouse, yeah. Yeah, Roadhouse, Roadhouse which was uh, is just up the road and they provided all the equipment and the and the uh, studio for us to come down and then do the, the live show there. Cool. They were, they were a really cool company to work with. It was too bad that it closed down. Because I did like our VR show. It was a lot of fun. Is there any plans to uh, bring it back on your own channel? There was for a while. It's just... VR stalled. VR, yeah, it definitely stalled a little bit. And it, it's tough because you really want the viewers to get the same experience. So when you're discussing something or discussing a new game, you want them to really understand. And it's hard to watch VR yeah. on a stream, in my opinion. Yeah. It's almost like watching the Blair Witch Project when those types of found footage films had never come out before. And you're like, I'm a little bit nauseated right now. Like, there's a lot of moving around. So it's kind of hard to really, like, show that off. Yeah, it is. Yeah. As, as the technology gets better and better and more varied, I think we'll definitely revisit that show. Yeah. But uh, until then, right now, it's just, it's, it gets a little burst of a, a cool game here or a neat experience. That's about the extent of yep. where it is right now. Mm -hmm. I, I've had, I think, just about one modern VR experience. I was at my friend's house and I was trying out the PlayStation VR. And he puts it on my head and it's like that serious system with the headphones and then it cranks on and everything. And it was like a, uh, sort of like an interactive movie. Yeah. And you are doing a, a deep sea dive, and then you're getting pulled up in a cage, and a shark comes. And I didn't know that the, my friends had all left the room. And I was freaking out, like with this shark coming at, yeah. coming at me. Like I'm from Australia, so we grew up with like shark threats. <laughs> but I, this is a real threat. And I didn't know how to take the thing off without breaking it. Yeah. So I just couldn't escape the VR. <laughs> To turn into a turn into like sword art online where if I escape the VR I die or something. <laughs> we had something similar where we were playing uh, the Stranger Things experience oh. and Stacy was doing it and I played it before so I knew when there was a, the the jump scare was gonna happen. Yeah. And so I timed it watching the screen while she is immersed and when the creature came, I grabbed her shoulder and she freaked out and just swung and I had yeah. a hand mark on my arm. Hopefully I get hit me. so hard, like... Was that on stream? Yeah. It was live on stream. It scared me so much. I think that's when everybody realized, like, some people, it's like fight or flight. Apparently yeah. I'm fight. Yeah. Like, if something happens, I'm gonna like, clock you in the face. Like, yeah. whenever I can to fight this, yeah. this I never did that again. No, I I'm a lot. so mad. It's, oh, it's so scared me. And the thing is, you always think when you're doing, you're playing virtual reality, you're like, if it gets too scary, I'm just gonna close my eyes. Yeah. You never have to close your eyes. You're in so much danger that you're like, I have to be alert right now. So, oh, good old virtual reality. It's fun times. It's only gonna get more scary as time goes on. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Awesome. I'm starting I mean, sensory like, feedback or something. Yeah. As well. Uh, so on uh, Cooking with Stacey, what are some of the, your uh, favorite dishes you've made on that show? Ooh, I've made some really good dishes. I think very highly of my cooking. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> probably one of my most favorite, or at least the one dish that I'm really craving right now, it being like summertime and barbecue season, is I made a homemade burger. And instead of it being like a traditional bun that goes on top of your burger, I made a grilled cheese sandwich and then I cut it into the shape of a bun and stuff with like sesame seeds on top. So it still looked kind of like a burger, but instead of the bun, it was like an actual like grilled cheese sandwich. So it had the bacon, it had all the fixings on it. Grilled cheese, fixings, burger, grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. And more cheese on the burger patty. Yeah. Like there was, a, there was a lot of cheese. I think we ended up calling it Royale of Cheese. Yeah. Royale of the Cheese. The chat voted that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It's so good. It's so like good. It's big. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I'm craving right now. Because I'm like, it's summertime, Canada Day, like we, long weekend yeah. is coming up. I'm like, I want a burger, but I'm like, I want that specific burger. You gonna make something specific for Canada Day? 
I, I am planning on doing a Canada theme for my cooking show on Sunday, but I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to make yet. So I'm not sure, probably something red and white. I want to incorporate some maple syrup in there, some Canadian back bacon. Some poutine maybe. Some poutine. <laughs> oh, I make a really good breakfast poutine. Instead of like french fries, go hash browns, you know those, what are the tater tots. Tater tots. Tater tots instead. So much better than french fries. Oh, love poutine. <laughs> we got a uh, nerdy bartender pairing to go with that. Some sort of whiskey cocktail, Canadian whiskey cocktail. I actually, I saw that, I think it was last week or a few weeks ago, you had about the Focusaurus on the channel. Yeah. I feel so bad every time I say his name. I feel like I've sworn on I've, I've usually just been saying F. F. <laughs> <laughs> you used to be on my shows, and I'm trying to think, I think I just called him Saurus? Yeah. <laughs> Dinosaurus? I don't know. Anyway, uh, he was actually on my Canada Day episode a year ago, and we made Canadian-themed snow cones. So they were snow combs with rye whiskey and maple syrup and probably a few other ingredients and oh, those were good. And it was like a hot long weekend last year, so it was a perfect drink. Uh, what's some other stuff you made on that show? Under the bartender? Out. Yeah. Um, I, I make a really good butter beer, like a Harry Potter butter beer. I think I saw that one on uh, your Instagram, it's like 700 calories or something. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. It's so many calories and it's worth it. Yeah. It's, it's like a meal. It's so delicious. And it's not like the butter beer that they make at, at Disneyland, I guess, or Universal. Wait, where Universal Studios. Universal Studios. Yeah. Universal yeah. Studios. Mine actually has beer in it, and it's got like alcoholic whipped cream, so it actually looks like the butter yeah. beer. It's, the 700 it's calories, so like, it tastes like 700 calories of goodness. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty solid. Good. <laughs> and then, other than that, like, I've been really getting into molecular gastronomy. Oh, so, really? Yeah, for my like, uh, cocktails. Like Heston, Heston Blumenthal kind of stuff? Oh, I don't know if I know. Oh, He's that guy know. with the, uh, the weird glasses, the celebrity chef. And, uh, oh, I feel like you know so many celebrity chefs, too. Ooh. I don't know that one. I feel really bad. Yeah. English, English, English guy does like, like weird gastronomical things. Look it up later. Okay, yeah, I might, yeah. yeah okay, I might know what you're talking about. Cause yeah. I'm, I'm sure if I, if I thought about it, I could name Heston's Feasts, maybe? Is a show where he'll do like... He did this one where he had all his guests and he did a medieval feast where he actually had birds come out of a pie. Oh, <laughs> Sounds I find amazing. that actually does sound familiar. Like he goes like really over the top. He goes really things, high, right? yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love stuff like that. Like it's just like a whole experience. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I've done a few different drinks with molecular gastronomy. The snow globe. Like the snow globe. I, this is not even close to Christmas, but that's fine. I made a cocktail and it has like a little Christmas tree with like a star on it and it's like rosemary and it looks like a snow globe, and then I made these little like white balls, I guess, that then they burst in your mouth and they're full of like alcohol and flavor. So it like, actually looks like a snow globe. Like caviar. Wow, how did you do that? <laughs> There's <laughs> a lot of steps. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's, that's, for, that's for a different stream. Yeah. <laughs> um, other than the uh, cooking shows, what's your favorite thing to stream? Definitely Nerdy Bartender. For sure, because I always get to have a different guest on every week, and it's, it's just so much fun. There's a lot of chat interaction. You get to hang out. You get to play different games. Make you get to cool drink. Cool drinks. We get drinks. <laughs> that's definitely that's definitely my favorite. So I'm start getting a bit messier towards the end of the stream. Depending <laughs> on the guests. <laughs> yes. Because I mean, sometimes for our guests, they're like, "This is my weekend out." They're like taking a break from their streaming schedules, yeah. and they're like, "This is my Friday night." And so yeah, it, it can sometimes get a, a little messy. Might not be the right word, but. <laughs> Or, or very much the right word. Or, yeah, maybe yeah. that's exactly the right word. I'm a little crazy. <laughs> so, um, Mike, uh, you're sort of more behind the scenes in a producer role. What kind of challenges do you face with an internet stream over traditional media from a technical standpoint? I mean, other uh, than what you saw at the beginning of this stream. What I saw at the beginning of this stream, it's just like, it was just, yep, been there. Like, I, I know exactly what's going on. Um, obviously, the biggest struggle is a stable internet connection. Hmm. Like we focus a lot on production quality, even when we go on the road. So we've, we've done on location streams. We packed up all our gear this past fall and drove down to LA and maintained our streaming schedule while we're down there, more or less. But to keep the production quality, we brought our lights and our cameras and everything that went along with it. And then finding a stable internet connection down there, because a hotel, not good enough. And uh, most cell phone providers, not stable enough. So it was a, that's a big challenge for us when we're on the road. The technical stuff as far as getting audio right and lighting right, we kind of got that down to a science, more or less. But the problem with it being live is 
if something goes wrong, it's during the show. You yeah. can't fix it in an edit. You can't go back and adjust something. You're panicking. And we have a fantastic team of mods who are able to help either keep a, keeping the chat happy and entertained or problem solving while something's going on and trying to fix things on the fly. So it's, it's, a, it's a whole team effort. Do you want to shout out those mods now? Yeah, for sure we yeah, can. Yeah, our moderators are incredible. They do so much work behind the scenes. Yeah. Like, just so much. OK. Well, our, our, very first so mod, our very first mod was Raven De La Cruz. And uh, he's from Australia. Not. He's in, uh, he's in Bris Brisbane or Brisbane? Brisbane. Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah, I always say that wrong. I always want to say Brisbane. I'm like, Brisbane. yeah. Okay. He's down there, and um, uh, he's our very first one. That was our very first mod, and then we had Classic Mac and Army Hutchings on yeah. board, and joined our team, and again helped us out with so much behind the scenes and like Classic. writing things. And yeah. They just do so much for us. Classic Mac is really yeah, like he's helped us out with the charity stuff. We've done a bunch of things with the Chai with him. Army Hutchings is our 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 editor for writing either proposals yeah. to companies or this and that. He helps a lot with that aspect. And then, so sorry, after like, I try to do an order all the time. In order, yeah. Dollar Cruise, Classic Mac, Army Hatchings. And then we had Sir G. Force. Sir G. Force came aboard and he was like our lifesaver when we go on the road and like hooking us up with the internet and making sure our streams could actually happen when we were in LA. And then it was uh, Zero Point Props. Yeah. 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 Zero, zero Point Props. Props. I don't want to miss anyone here. <laughs> uh, zero Point Props. And oh my goodness, this guy is like a tech guy. Like he helps us out. So a tech god, I should say. Not a tech guy. A tech god. <laughs> helps us out so much, especially with sound. Yeah. Um, he is incredible. And then after he, he that. He flew up and helped uh, set up our studio. Yeah. For us when we transitioned. Our new yeah. studio when we were going into stream on. And then after that, we most our most recent mods are the Soul Man and Rumble Silskin. Yeah. And I, my goodness, I don't want to forget anybody. I'm That's everybody. That is everybody. Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, there's orange, there's orange chicken. <laughs> well, yeah. But yeah. Like, we, have, we have a few like minor mods out there yeah. that like they'll they'll like jump in. Like orange chicken is great. Like when we're like live, like in Vancouver or something, he's there. He's always he's there. there. Yeah. Marathon streams, like he is. He's like our workhorse when we're doing something like a big live show. He is there. And he is. One yeah. Of our, um, so yeah, those are our moderators. I really want to make sure I just get everybody. Oh, I'm sure we have enough Okay, session. okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we we everybody. Everybody. These are yeah. amazing. And just the person, again, we're live, right? Like, anything can happen. You could, like, forget, like, a tiny detail or something, and then you're yeah. like, oh, no, what did I do? We, we just do. edit the names into the audio version. Yeah, of yeah exactly. Like, see it happen. I definitely yeah. said this. John Smith. Yeah. You'd like to I just know how hard they work and just how much they do that I just want to make sure that they're, like, noticed. And, yeah. To get their love, because they're amazing. So what can you tell me about uh, Webam Media? Well, we, we, uh, we're a media company, so we've done things like, uh, like wedding videos, commercials, um, different kind of corporate work as well. Yeah. Right short now, films, we, short actually. films, yeah. We uh, use it to run our streams, but also we've been doing a lot of, uh, of production streams for other companies. So we recently ran a, uh, a StarCraft II esports tournament for Base Trade TV, and we ran all the production on that. We're setting up another one for a, a board game company down in Seattle, and there's a third one which I I can actually I talk, talk about. about. No. Um, but, oh, sorry, I didn't like, in. I'm like, nope, nope, yeah, don't, don't say, don't say it. Let's not talk about that. So we we do a lot of because of our production quality, we're becoming quite known for that aspect of the stream. Because a lot of Twitch stream is a the webcam and and a microphone, right? Yeah. So because we have this experience with it, uh, we're being asked and hired to come help set up other studios in the same manner. Cool. Yeah. So um, what I can tell and um, that it's kind of made more apparent by uh, what you just said is you both have background in TV uh, and film. We do. Uh, what did your road look like from that industry to becoming partnered streamers on Twitch? Oh my goodness. I think if you had asked me like, well, I mean, 10 years ago, there was no Twitch. So I probably would not have ever expected that this is where I would have ended up. Like when I, when I first moved out to Vancouver and I was going to film school, it was all for acting and performing. And I was, I was going down that road. I was doing my auditions and getting parts here and there. And I just realized that I really wanted to take control of the, my career that I wanted to be in and like start making my own content. 
And that's kind of when I guess you came into my life yeah. and you kind of had the same vision and you were just like on the road to making your own things. And um, together with forming Wabam, it was like, we need to learn how to edit. We need to learn how to produce. We need to learn how to write. We need to learn how Everything. to do light, how to do sound. <laughs> like set building. I never ever thought I would be building sets. And I had to learn how to build sets. Yeah. And that's how I got into cosplay. I was like, I need costumes. I guess I'm learning how to build costumes and making all of that happen. So, yeah. It has been, it's just been this like crazy journey that I never ever expected to go down, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. like I love how it all came together and... It's, it's like, it's, that's ex it's exactly that. I mean, that for the longest time, it's like you wait for somebody else to tell you, hey, you seem like you're good at X, come work on this movie or this TV show. And then with the rise of YouTube, it was like, you know what, I can make my own content, I can learn on the fly, not have to wait for somebody else to say hello. And then... Twitch shows up and it's, for us, we saw that as essentially an extension of YouTube where we can create high quality shows and because you're doing it on such a regular schedule, the amount of experience and hours you're actually putting in and learning is exceeding that of even YouTube. Yeah. So it, it's just that, that constant, that constant bomb bombarding of information is so where that shows like instead of doing, you know, a 15 minute video for YouTube a week, you're doing 12 hours of content a week. So the amount you learned in that time dwarfs what was on YouTube. So that's how we started really moving forward with our production is just the amount of hours we we're putting into it. Yeah. And like, we just like kind of just happened to like jump onto Twitch a little, a little bit by mistake, I guess. Yeah. And just like immediately loved it. Like having that chat interaction. Yeah. Like it's like so hard. I keep wanting to like look over there right now and I'm like, hello chat! I want to talk to all of you. And it, it's so amazing to be able to get to talk to people and get that instant feedback on what you're doing and what you're working on. And Was it the, your, one of your first streams, if not your first stream, you're having technical difficulties trying to figure it out and chat helped you help me like, solve it. Yeah. And that was like a clicking point for the live thing. Yeah, and I was like, let's put all of our shows on, on Twitch because that's where we're going to learn the most. And that's where we're going to be able to reach as many people as possible and like, you know, have people jumping in and helping us and just growing that community and just realized how amazing the Twitch community can be. Yeah. We found our people on Twitch. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. It's like TV with instant analytics. Exactly. 100% yeah. what it is. If, if something sucks, you're, you're told very quickly that it sucked in you chat. Pivot in mid episode. Exactly. Rather yeah. than a season later. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly that. Yeah. Um, so, as, as you mentioned before, you're also somewhat famous for your cosplay work, being ranked among the likes of Jessica Negri on uh, IGN's list of top oh. cosplayers. I think I forgot about that. That's cool. <laughs> uh, what can Jessica first... Negri is amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah. yes, queen. Like, she is fantastic. I am nowhere near her level. I'm not sure how I made it on the list. <laughs> Well, what came first, the uh, cosplay or the fan films? I think technically the fan film, like my first, I guess, real fan film that we made together was a StarCraft one. And I didn't even know what cosplay was at the time. Like I hadn't been to any conventions. I didn't know this was a thing that people did is build these incredible costumes and then go to a convention and meet other people. Yeah. And so I had built my like kind of Kerrigan ghost cosplay, I guess. And then after the fan video was released, it started popping up on all these cosplay sites and they're like, check out this cool cosplay. And I was like, cosplay, what is this word that they keep saying when they're referring to what I did? And it was just, it was a really cool, like, yeah. they all sudden be immersed and I'm like, there's like this whole community of people that are making costumes. So I guess technically the fan film came first and then I had to build a costume to yeah. be a part of the fan film. And then that's kind of how almost every costume I built it's since then or based had on other, a fan film. got yeah. other people to build for me or help build yeah. has been based on a fan film. Cool. Well, uh, I just got to do a quick read and then we'll have a short break. Yeah, sure. sounds Get good. back to it. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing Streamlamps Merch, our all-in-one solution for branded custom apparel that represents you and your community. It's the fastest and easiest way to start your very own custom merch store, get paid every month, receive custom alerts with each purchase to thank your viewers. And with worldwide shipping and lightning fast delivery, it's truly magical. So how does it work? We handle printing, shipping, fulfillment, and customer service for you so that you can keep doing what you do best. It's easy to set up and the upload wizard will help you create your own store in seconds. Don't have a logo? No worries, we can help you make one. 
Streamlabs merch gives creators another way to get paid doing what they love and lets viewers show their support beyond the broadcasts with something they can hold in their hands and wear in real life. Create, design, and start your own custom merch store by visiting streamlabs.com forward slash merch now. Also tag us on Instagram repping your favorite streamer to be featured on our page at Streamlabs Merch. We've got a special surprise after a short break, so uh, stick around, we'll be back in a few minutes.
I said, do you want to do it now? Sure, let's yeah. do it. Do you want to do it with me, or do you want me to do it, then I'm going to do it with it? Okay, yeah, let's do it. And we have all those come up. All right. Ready? Okay. okay. Ready? Well, bam! Well, bam! That's actually pretty good. Like, that was your first well, bam? That was pretty good. I think good. I'm a little, a little too nervous for it. But, no, um... no, no. Okay, well, we'll do one more well, bam. Chat loud if you have... If you have a little bit of echo there, a little bit of those aforementioned technical difficulties. But, uh, we good now? How's it going, chat? Uh oh. Okay. How's it down? It's good. It's doable. I'm a little quiet. Oh, I could be loud. Just huh. that's like that is a rare comment to get. Like. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna do it one more time. So it's just a well, bam. Okay, I'm gonna do it the first time. Yeah, then you gotta look. Probably, right? Yeah, all right. It's okay. so like really put your heart. All right. It. If I don't feel enough heart, I'm gonna tell you up. All right. Okay, let's do this. Ready? One, three. Well, bam. That was pretty good, and I like the smile, and that's why I do okay. it. Okay. Every time I yell well, bam, I get like this big. It does help. Face. Gotta get my. I think we gotta do eventually. We gotta be like a this is just a stream lab or we'll something like that. We'll, we'll work on it. Yeah, Chatline, if um, if you've got any words out there, damn heart, you're like the heart of most. If Chatline right now, good. all you right, you deserve a well, thank love you. That, so. Yes, I. <laughs> but I uh, understand you have your own podcast as well. Yeah, it's actually gonna the podcast is not created. So And I, for the, and then we would start like building a treatment for the for the different stories. And I loved it. I love doing the podcast. So that's why I think called? I was so excited to be here today. Well, I think it was just called the Stacey Ward Podcast. I right. think I don't even know. I'm like, yeah, it was called the Stacey Ward Podcast. <laughs> so um, you attend a fair number of conventions. I do. I love conventions. What's this do you idea go to about conventions? Us? No, I want to. I'm going to TwitchCon this year. <gasps> High five. Um, yes, amazing. TwitchCon is so much one. fun. There's, there's not too many where I'm from in West Australia, but That's moving fair. here, I'm right in the thick of it now. You never went to PAX Australia? I'm not sure where that is. In uh, that's over east. I didn't make it oh. to that. I went to an architecture convention once. Okay. And uh, we had a thing called Supernova there, which is sort of like an anime and uh, gaming convention. Oh, cool. It's pretty okay. good. I met Joe Kubert from Marvel there. Um, that's pretty awesome. Like a good convention to kind of like get oh, your and, toes Oh, and uh, Mike Mignona as well. I think that's his name. Vic Mignona. I don't know. If Chat knows his name, uh, the voice yes. of Edward Elric. Um, oh, very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, conventions are great. You're going to love TwitchCon. Mm. Last year was my first TwitchCon I'd ever done, and it was amazing. It was so much fun. So I'm definitely going to be at TwitchCon this year. And I am probably going to go to PAX. Are you going to go to PAX? Oh, I hope so. PAX West? Yeah, it's so close. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do my best to go to PAX. I went the last couple of years. That's also a great convention. And then I'm having my own convention this year, which you're more than welcome to come if you'd like to come. Definitely. It's called StacyCon. It's, it's not like Tan TanaCon. What was a big YouTuber convention? Everyone's angry. I don't know. TanaCon? I feel really bad. I should probably know that. Anyway, um, it's not going to be quite like that. It's not going to be that crazy, uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's happening in Vegas, and it's just going to be a group of us getting together from my chat land and, like, my moderators and my community, and we're just going to have, like, a crazy weekend in Vegas. So if you want to come, you should come. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to take some time out for that. It's going to be <laughs> so much fun. We're staying at the Golden Nugget, too, which I'm like, I love nuggets. It's just perfect. We're going to be doing Nerdy Bartender live on location. We might be getting Wabam tattoos. You don't have to get a Wabam tattoo. You can get Streamlabs tattoo. Uh, maybe we'll talk to the higher-ups about that. <laughs> You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. See Let's if, not uh, get crazy here. Maybe if we get partnered and then a certain amount of subs, maybe I'll get a uh, Always Tired with Kev's. I love <laughs> Guys, if you want to see that happen, let's let's make this happen. We oh no, what have I done? We can make this happen. All right. <laughs> Where do you think the future of uh, the streaming industry is heading? Oh my goodness, that's a loaded question. I feel like you would want to jump in on this question. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure. 
I feel like I, I really want to I want to see more creative streamers out there. I want to see more talk shows and different things on Twitch, and it's just not there yet. And I hmm. would love Twitch to push those different channels more. But I don't know. Like I just I feel like I just like kind of keep waiting for that, that Twitch and everything to like catch up to the types of shows and stuff that we're doing right now. And I don't feel like it's there yet, but I'm still hopeful, still being optimistic and positive that it's going to get there sooner. So if you've got an idea for a creative stream, just start doing it. That's all you need to do. Yeah, just go for it. Just do it. Just jump in. But like, I think also like explore other options too for your creative hmm. content that you want to build because there are other platforms as well. And like Twitch is great. Don't get me wrong. I love Twitch. I love Twitch. But I, I just don't think it's catching up as much as I would like it to. So yeah. I think it's, it's anybody out there that's a creative streamer, like do it live stream on Twitch, but also find like other platforms too, to put your content out there because there's a lot of viewers all over the world and some of them don't even really know about Twitch yet because it's still relatively new in the big scheme of things. So lots of, lots of platforms you can put your content on like Instagram TV now, like there's Instagram TV. Have you heard of this? I haven't seen that. Yeah. It's, it's like, like the newest streaming. thing. A little bit, yeah, but I think it's also kind of like Instagram, YouTube a little bit where you can actually upload like proper videos to Instagram TV and this is like brand new. So I just, I feel like the whole online media, it's it's just growing and there's, it's just still so young and so new and it's going all these different directions, which is exciting and great. So if you have like an idea out there for content, just jump in, just start making it and put it out there and just see what sticks and go with that. Yeah. Huh. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just off the cuff. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so uh, a bit more specifically, what's next for Wabam and the Stacey Roy? What's for Wabam and Stacey Roy? Well, this TV show is something that's just, like I said, been taking up so much of our time. And this is really big for us. And I'm very, very excited about it. And I hope that we can continue making TV shows. Like maybe we'll get a season two. And all of that content that we're working on right now behind the scenes that our audience isn't getting to see quite yet, I think is really going to impact our streams. Like even just the different type of gear that we're acquiring with, with shooting this new TV show, we're going to be able to use now in our stream. So I'm really hoping that we're going to up our production quality a lot on our Twitch shows. And if everything keeps like going down that road, we'll be able to add more and more shows to our, to our streaming schedule. Cool. That's, that's the future right now. Well, uh, maybe we should get onto that special surprise I mentioned before the, uh, the Can break. Can you see these? Have you guys seen these yet? If we want to try switching, switching cameras there, Ed. I All right, so it's a little overexposed there, but what are you going to do? So we've got these eggs. What are we going to do with these eggs today? We are going to learn, well, you're going to learn because I'm a pro. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not, not that much of a pro. Um, how to do the one-handed egg craft. All right. So my first question for you, I'm, we're going to switch, the, switch things around a bit. Do you cook? Uh, I do. I you do? do. Yeah. Okay. Can you cook an omelet? Like a, like a nice... I like omelet? to think I can. Okay. Have you done the one-handed egg craft before? Uh, why, don't, why don't we find out? Oh! This guy might be more of a professional than I realized. Okay. So I did my first one-handed egg craft live on stream. Okay. And I didn't even think it would work. And I was like, I'm just going to give this a try. And I was a little overly confident in the moment. Boom. Did the perfect one-handed egg craft. I don't always get it right, but this is what I've learned so far. If you're going to master the one-handed egg craft, you really want like a loose wrist, like, you know, just like shake it out. You know what All I right. mean? Like you just want to be like relaxed and, you know, you know, loosen up the hand, the hand grip a little bit, All you right. know, you want to really bring the confidence. So remember shoulders back, Okay. look I'm gonna need dead to get into serious. camera. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like hair tied back. You don't want something that's going to like block your peripheral vision. Like it's really, you just, you want to be on top of things here. Okay. Eye contact with camera and just okay. like own it. Be like, I've got this, this little egg right here. And you almost just kind of want to like talk to camera and then just be like, boom, and just like commit and go for it. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, I, know, uh, I know it sounded like a lot, but it'll all come together in the moment. Just remember shoulders back. You know? All right. All right. And just like crack that bad boy. So Michelle, if you're watching, I'm sorry about the uh, damage deposit on the office. But, um, just, just all right. Everywhere. You got a tiny piece of a shell, but overall, what we what we really like to see here is that the, the you didn't break the yolk. 
Yeah. Like sometimes you do the one-handed egg crack and it's just, it's too aggressive. Yolk breaks everywhere. You know, that tiny little piece of like eggshell there, that's fixable. You can just grab like a little spoon or a knife or a fork or any utensil. Or just scramble it and add some salt and don't tell anyone. And don't, yeah, yeah, I do that all the time. Like sometimes I like try to like look back in the monitor. I'm like, can anyone see there's eggshell in there? Because if not, we're just going to go with it. Um, like I'll let you know the, uh, the twist ending here is okay. I can't crack an egg with two hands. Right? It's so much harder with two hands. I can't do it. Maybe we can try and do that. Okay. Let's see if we can crack the two. And I'll even so, try because I'm not going to lie. I am way worse trying to do a two-handed egg crack. Yeah. Let's do it at the same time. Okay. So it's because like how do you normally... I'm trying to think because like... So you, you so crack much. it with one, right? You crack like, it and then the you side. pull it apart with two, then, right? Oh, okay. I, well, I was actually... Look at that. It's like two halves right there. I'm about to get shown up here. Maybe you should have a cooking show. Maybe we're just really good at cracking eggs today. I think okay. I'm see a These eggs are rigged. Crack. Yeah. Here's oh, dub really double what it comes handed? down to. The double handed right. egg crack. Can we I've get a seen zoom? It be done before. Let's uh let's see if we can do this. So now. I just want everyone to know these eggs are cage free, free range. And I'm gonna chug all of these Rocky Balboa style so they don't go to waste. Off oh, camera. Nice. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right, chat lad, if you're impressed right now, like equally as impressed as I am, which is very, very impressed, I want to see some emote hype right now in the chat land because that is crazy. How much egg really are you supposed good. to get in your hands though? A, a significant amount or you're um, doing it wrong. I've got a good golden glaze going here. Yeah, it's like, you know, and then just sometimes you just want to rub that through the hair and the face, like face mask, hair Is mask. that good for your hair? Um, it is, but when you rinse your hair, you want to like rinse your hair with cold water or else you make scrambled eggs. Oh my goodness. I'm we'll a see. terrible person right now. I feel so bad. Okay. That's all right. The camera's remember, going cold off hair, cold, cold, cold hair. Cold hair. Cold hair. Right. Water on the I'm hair. I'm always looking for a way to sort of handle this mess. Without you have scissors. a glorious hair. Thank I you. want to have a whole discussion with you. We'll do it after the stream as to what hair products you're using because okay. your hair is incredible. Thank and you. Teach That's very nice ways. to hear. Teach me your ways. Well, uh, before we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to plug? Um, just guys, if uh, if you if you liked what we talked about today and you want to check out my shows, uh, it's twitch.tv slash the Stacy Roy. I predominantly do cooking shows and I've also got a talk show called The Nerdy Bartender coming out with us. Honestly, my community is incredible. They welcome everybody and they're so friendly. I'm so proud of the community we've built. Hashtag Stacy's chat is best chat. Uh, so come hang out with us and just have have some fun. Yeah, that's that's basically that's basically it. And thank you so much for having me. Like, no worries. Like, Thanks for coming. Are incredible. You have such a sweet setup here. I'm like in love with your merch. I already made a joke. I should have brought like a really big purse just so I could like take souvenirs home with me because there's a lot of really cool stuff in this office. We've actually got a uh, limited edition Streamlabs Live mug and T-shirt on the Streamlabs merch store. So Ooh. you check that out. I will um, definitely. Might check be. That out. Uh, could be doing a giveaway next week. You heard it here first. Oh, guys, giveaway. <laughs> giveaway hype. So uh, thanks for joining us today for the first uh, first episode. These are some old notes for the third episode. <laughs> if you missed it, we'll be posting a VOD on the Streamlabs YouTube channel, which you can find in the link below. We'll also be releasing the podcast as an audio download next Wednesday on all your podcasting platforms. You can follow Streamlabs on Twitter at Streamlabs HQ, the podcast at Streamlabs Live, and me at Doug Vandalay. Join me next Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time when I talk to Pete from Gaming Careers. Awesome. Well, thank you again for having me. And to all of my viewers out there, make sure to hit that follow button before you leave. Hit the follow button on Streamlabs. All right. Have a good rest of your day, guys. Oh, I'm so excited. You're amazing. You like... You